he just like put his hand on my shoulder and pushed me back on the couch. And I remember just staring at the clock on the TV stand as like a couple minutes went by. I think all of us, we want to pretend that we're, that we're badass people, that we would fight and kick and scream and, and you don't. I think in that moment, all of a sudden you realize that this is not okay and to be as okay as I can possibly be, I just need to check out. And so I did. I totally just checked out mentally and just stared at the clock. But I still struggle with like, I could have like, I could have tried to do something. And so it must be my fault because it was like midnight and I was alone and I should have known better. And so I had a lot of shame and a lot of guilt. I, I, I couldn't, I got to a point a few weeks later where I just couldn't take it anymore. I was dropping the ball on everything at school. No one knew like what the heck was going on with me. And so I just got to that point where I had to tell someone I, I was 16 and I had no idea how to be okay. And so I told my boyfriend and then he came with me to tell my mom. But I still, like even, even as an adult and even as a person that is now an advocate and even as someone who understands consent, I still struggle with the idea that I let him in the door and that if I had made a different choice, that wouldn't have happened. But just because I let him in the door doesn't mean that I gave him consent to do what he did. Publicly, I just came out about it a, just a few weeks ago at Vera House Report to the Community when I decided to put on the survivor shirt to publicly say, hey, I'm a survivor and this is why I didn't report. It's become a huge part of, of who I am and a reason that I want to advocate for people who are going through sexual and domestic violence because, because hashtag me too.